as he is, so are we in this present world. How are we in this present world? In Christ. He is up there. Today it's about the preparation of the bride for the wedding. We are the bride of Christ if we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there is to be a wedding, there needs to be some preparation. We have to make sure that everything's in place, that the ring's there, that the pastor comes, that we have the marriage ceremony, and we have to make sure the bridegroom turns up or the bride turns up. It has been known that they didn't. Well, it's a far more serious event that we're anticipating. Nevertheless, the bride has to prepare herself. And in the first epistle of John, chapter 2, verse 1, and if you are part of the bride, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you would want to know what we're going to be talking about today. I am writing to you to keep you from sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have one who can plead for us with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins for those of the whole world besides the world here means the world of believers only as it does in John th verse 3 chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son he didn't give his only begotten son for the whole world, or the whole world would make it to heaven. It turns out that it depends on whether we are a believer or not. In John 6, 33, Jesus said, He is the bread who comes down from heaven, who gives life to the world. Now everybody in the world as we know it does not receive life from Jesus it can be used in a narrow sense, according to the Greek. And as John in his epistles said, we know we have learned to know him by keeping his laws. Not the Ten Commandments, not the Old Testament laws, the laws of Christ, which are bound up in the fruits of the Spirit. Now, in relation to this subject about heaven and the bride that is to be found in Revelation 21, who is the wife of the Lamb, we who belong to that wonderful bride for whom the Lord Jesus is coming can learn something from 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the children of God. We are God's children now. But what we shall be has not been told, has not yet been revealed. We have no comprehension of what we're going to look like or what we're going to be. We have no understanding of how we're going to appear when he appears. We have no idea, no hint of it from our natural viewpoint, no intimation of how this is going to come about except there'll be a change. It will happen in the twinkling of an eye. We have no idea how we will look, how we will live. Do you realize that? Now we can imagine as much as we like, we have no idea. And we can think about it as mortals who have an imagination, but we have no idea how we will be as immortal beings. It has not been revealed. So Paul, in his writings, John or Peter, and John in this book of Revelation, do not give any indication 
as to what we will be, as to how our environment will be. We have no idea what heaven will be like. We just have a, a figurative explanation of these matters in various parts of the Bible because our minds could never take it in. But we do know we will be like Christ because we shall see him as he is. We will not be like the Jesus they saw ascending into heaven because he had not yet put on his heavenly glory. We will see him in the fullness of his glory when he comes then we will be like him. Now Joseph Prince has said, as he is, so are we in this present world. And he has said, taking it from 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, yes, as he is, that means overcoming everything. Overcoming so that we never sin. Overcoming so that we have total prosperity overcoming so that we are never sick. No, that's not what it's all about. As he is, so are we in this present world. How are we in this present world? In Christ. He is up there. We are here in him, in Christ. We have his righteousness. And on the day of judgment, his righteousness will be clothing us. And it has nothing to do with the position of such authority here on earth as he has or as he had. Because there are books written about it by the charismatics saying that it is authority. By authority we heal the sick. We heal the sick by the power of the Holy Ghost. Even as it says... Of, in the book of Acts about Jesus. He went about doing good because God anointed him and he did the acts by the power of the Holy Ghost. We also do acts of healing and miracles by the power of the Holy Ghost, not by authority. Because the authority he gave the 70 disciples to heal the sick was because he was there in person and he actually went with them and did the healing. Because he said, when they came back and related that they had cast out demons, he said, yes, I saw Satan falling. He was there. He's divine. He has said to us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age, or the end of the world. So he is the one who has the power and the authority and the righteousness and the glory but we are in him and, and being in him he, it means he is able to act through us. Now, we are in the world manifesting Christ in the fruits of his spirit. Now, we do not know with any exactitude or even any proposed idea as to what we will be except we will be like him. We will have a luminosity. There will be something luminous about that, us. We do know that. It will come from him in glory because it says that as a star has light that differs from, from the others, so it will be with us in heaven. Now we're going to think about heaven for a while. What's heaven going to be like? In this world, we've had, we have four kinds of existence. First of all, we had a conception. There was a conception and we grew in the womb. Then there was a birth into this world. We were born in sin. If we're born again, we have that a kind of existence here on earth. We live as born-again people. The rest of the world do not, does not live as born-again people. Do you realize that? They're not living as Christ would have them live. 
We are living as born again people. Then we have another existence and it comes with an entrance into the next world whether by death or the coming of the Lord. So our future is held up for us in the next world that is to come. As Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Now in any one of those four existences on earth, and we do have the beginnings of the entrance into the next world because we are born again into that kingdom. But in any one of those four existences, we had no pre-understanding or pre-knowledge as to what it would be like. We had no knowledge at all before we were conceived. And even while we were in the womb, no knowledge. And neither did we have any knowledge as to what we would be when we were born. So we're born into the world and then we become aware of the world. Then we hear about Jesus Christ. And we have no idea what it's going to be like to be as a Christ, live as a Christian. But then we're born again and then we experience it without any pre-understanding of it. So it is with our next world and our next existence in that world. We already have tasted of the things of heaven. We already have tasted of the things of the kingdom of God, but in a minor way, because heaven is not there. We're joined to heaven in a way that already is the kingdom of God up there, is God himself and his dwelling place, but he hasn't made the new heaven and the new earth, which will be our heaven. And we have little understanding about it, but that shouldn't worry us. We have the faith to know that what Jesus said will happen, indeed it will be fulfilled. So now, in relation to our eternal condition in heaven, we need to realize God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth. It has told us about this in 2 Peter chapter 2. In fact, we'll have a look at that portion. In these verses, something wonderful is told us through the pen of the Apostle Peter. And he talks about the fact that there was a promise of the coming of the Lord, but it hasn't eventuated yet. And it says that those who didn't believe deliberately ignored that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and an earth was formed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth have been reserved for fire being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the godless. So as we went through the book of Revelation and came to the day of judgment, which was in chapter 20, that was around the time that there will occur in the future the destruction of the heavens and the earth by fire. It, I think it says in that, the King James Version, that the element shall melt with fervent heat. And then it goes on to say, do not ignore this. With the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. One day is not a thousand years. It's only like it. A thousand years is not representative of one day. It's only like it in the fact that it's a long time. Now the Jews originally had this idea of the seven days of creation. The six days meant that there were 4,000 years till Christ came, then 2,000 years, and then the seventh day was the millennium. That's a Jewish myth that came into the early church maybe around the second, third or fourth centuries that has remained in some form with us to this day. It is not so. It's to do 
with the fact that the Lord's not slow about his promise. And with the Lord, a day for us goes by and to him it's just like a thousand years. He's timeless. And so anybody following that doctrine has to realize scripturally it's incorrect and factually it's incorrect because the seventh day was supposed to start uh, at midnight in the year 2000 after 1999. It says the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Nobody will know it's coming. Then there'll be the coming of the Lord and the judgment and so forth. Then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise and the elements will be dissolved with fire. And the earth and everything that is, is done on it will be disclosed. That's what this translation says. And then it says that we need to look, live. It says, what kind of a life? What sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness? Nothing to do with lives of earthly prosperity. Nothing to do with lives of earthly education and careers. Nothing to do with earthly self-pleasing, earthly pleasures. Now, many of those things are involved in our lives. The important thing is, above all that, that we are to lead lives of holiness and godliness because of what God's going to do. Then it says, but in accordance with his promise. We're not waiting for that to happen. We can hasten it. We can kind of live in such expectation that, that it seems to be coming quicker but we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. And that should be at the core of every Christian's life and experience. We're joined to heaven in a way that already is the kingdom of God up there, is God himself and his dwelling place, but he hasn't made the new heaven and the new earth, which will be our heavens. 